What's up, creative faces? L up one set from Creative Sound, Creative University. In this video, I want to show you how to use samples in Studio One or any doll. If you can just grab the idea of how to use samples, I have a new sample pack. I want to show you that right now. All right, right here in Studio One, basically, the way you drag samples over, I, I highly suggest that you do it from your browser window. If you do it from your file, I mean, that's fine. You can drag anything in Studio One or in most dolls for that matter. But basically, um, if, if you're just viewing, previewing your samples, it's faster if you go through the doll. So say, for instance, you know what I mean? You can just click on it. Right. And, th and that's how you, you know, get through the samples a little bit quicker. Now, what I did with the samples was I labeled the the key that the sample is in, and I also put in the BPM right next to it, so you you, you never go wrong. Now, this is the uh, some of the tips I want to show you. Say we go for that. Let's drag that in there. All right, let's line it up. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Now, in Studio One. It, it warps, so to speak, right? It, it time stretches everything according to the, the project settings. And if yours don't do that, all you have to do is go to your preference area. And then you go to song setup. And then this option right here where it says stretch audio files to song tempo, you have to make sure that that's checked. That's also an option that you pay attention to even before you start the session this this option is presented to you two times so if in case you miss it the first time you can just you know go through the preference area this is a bpm of 120 and this project is 90 bpm so let's hear what that sounds like right so it it automatically adjust itself some other ways to look at this looking at further details is if you hit the i this is the i button here it's, it stands for information and it's going to populate this side panel situation here and right here we can see the file tempo we can see that this file is 120 and we can do a couple of things we can speed it up if we want to from here i never really go through that route but it's it's an option, um, but we can see that this file is 120 and we could do one or two things. We can actually push this project back up to 120 if we want to. And this is the correct file tempo. The other thing that we can do is time stretch it manually. So typically what you'll do is go to the edge You go to the edge of the region and there is a couple of tools that will populate just by default. We can see that we can, you know, do this back and forth. This is just really cutting it down. This is not time stretching. So what you, what you have to do now on the Mac, you hold down your option. On a PC, I'm not really sure. I, I believe it's op option or alt that's that's probably more accurate on a pc it's probably alt and then now you're taking the whole thing and you you're you're time stretching it so if i was to do that so i'm cutting it down you know what i mean i i can and that's and that's how you deal with samples so th this concept is the same in all dolls i'm sure all dolls you are you have the option to warp your sample according to, you know, whatever you want to do. So here are some of the other, you know, tips and trick that you can, you know, use. So if you don't like that sample, you can take it and do something like this. So I'm going to just go and grab a impact instrument. All right, I'm going to split this to grid. So because my resolution is at one fourth. That means every quarter note or every beat. So one, two, three, four, 
So basically the way that that would work is like one, two, three, four, one, two. So it's cut at every quarter note or every beat, right? And we're just gonna make sure that we have all this highlighted. Move this up. And then I'm gonna bring this in over here. And I'm not gonna drop it. I'm not gonna release my, my mouse yet because it would just throw all of them on the same pad. Instead, what I'm gonna do is hit the shift button and then it's going to release itself across all 16 all 16 pads there's nothing on b because it should only be 16 all right so now and let's change this one to stereo because um sounds a little weird because all of them are stereo now there's a click right there, right? There's it's a click on all of them. This little click sound because everything is being chopped in the middle of 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 the sample, right? Unfortunately, we have the most basic the most basic samplers in Studio One, and it's something I'm really hoping that personas change. There is no DC filtering, so there there is no button to clean up. You know the 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 beginning of a sample and the end if you chat if you if you chop anything in the middle you know zero crossing type type thing so here is one thing you could do to clear that up so just select all of your samples so i'm gonna click the first one and hit shift select the very last one and then select them all one thing i found useful doing this is by just activating the filter here and we just kind of have to shave off the uh you know a little bit of the highs you know and and that that will kind of cut into you know the high frequency of something if like if hopefully you don't need the high frequency but basically you know that helped a little bit you just have to play around and see what you can get and um let's see the one this one might be but see you're gonna chop off some high end and some low end with this one i definitely say you know if that's the filter you're going for if if you know because i'm i don't mind doing that but in the event that you need that that extra if you, if you don't want to do that it's like, what do you do next? You know, if this is the way that you're going about chopping your samples. You know what I mean? Um, there, there is another one in here. Um, it, it's uh, which one is it? You know, you just gotta, yeah, you gotta play with it. Another, another one is by. Uh, I would deactivate this. You can, you can adjust the attack a little bit to the the beginning of it, but the ending, the click at the ending is still there. You can do that as well, but I feel like it's y you know that that's another way to do this, but I feel like we shouldn't have to do that, but as of right now, that's what we have so um. There's also plugins that take care of that too, like uh, AccuSonus or something like that. If you're dealing with clicks, you can definitely do that. Or Isotope, you you know that's another way. But you know, again, sampler that that's usually something that's involved in in the sampler. So you know, that's just I know that's a question I get a lot. You know, dealing with persona samplers is the most basic thing ever. But that's a couple of things I find that helps me when dealing with, you know, chopping samples in the middle somewhere. Um, 
Another one that does the same thing is sample one. Let's glue everything back together. Split that. There's a bigger gap. It's not as chopped or sliced as, as we did before. You can also manually chop this stuff. First, you got to make sure your snap is on and then and all that good stuff. Say I wanted to do that, you know, further going and snap that if I want to. I'm just showing you guys several ways you can go about chopping and slicing. Right click on this and we can send this to sample one instead. And so now we have this. You know what I'm saying? Same deal here, but it, everything is more, more so on a linear path, I guess. Everything is based on the keyboard. And now all your samples are being shown through here. And then you can go in and zoom in and make adjustments as needed. You know, just kind of pick your, your spot and then zoom in and make your, your fine adjustments if you feel like, you know, you need to clean it up a little bit more. Um, I do see a X fade here at the bottom. I, I don't know how that, I really don't know how that affects the, the sample. I have I have not yet heard how it, it makes a difference. Um, if I select all of them and I just say, you know, X fade, um, you know, I, I haven't found. You know what I mean? So, again, um, maybe I'm using it wrong. Maybe maybe I did not quite, quite grasp the idea behind how that's supposed to be used. But as of right now, it seems that the X fade is not working. So, yeah. Oh, maybe it works if you hold down the key. Yeah. So I'm. So if you're holding down the key, that's how it works. So let's let's see let's see let's let's uh let's make a beat and 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 of course if it doesn't work out for you then you know you you can always go here at the amp and do exactly what i showed you for the impact you could just go here and just change you know the attack you know what that actually worked That took away the, wow, okay, that might be your solution. <laughs> that might that might be your solution. But again, we need a DC filter button personas. That that would be that would be best. All right, so let's uh, let's put this in pers to uh, perspective. So let's start here. All right, I'm going to take all of these and select those. And we're going to activate my macros here. We're going to say legato. And so that everything can touch each other. And let's see. Throw sub lab in here right quick to create a baseline.
put the, the famous red light distortion on here. Let's add a little synth something. I don't know what we're going to find, but let's just make it more of what it is, more than what it is now. Here we go. This right here is a vocal I pulled from somewhere and uh, I bend it just by hitting the quantize and it automatically quantize the audio. Same for this here. And it just quantize in place. You know what I mean? So the, so that's, that's some of the ways of, of, of how you can use my samples that I have readily available for you guys. And you could chop them up and do whatever you wish, you know, to, to work with whatever you already have. So that's, you know, pretty much some concepts of what you can do with my uh, my samples that I made readily available for you guys. The guitar pack brush, as in paint brush. And, yeah, you know, the same concept applies to any samples that you're using. Take the samples utilize and put them inside your doll and whatever doll you you choose to use my my samples are wave you can put them anywhere that that wave is being you know red of course and yeah go to work do what you got to do i want to hear that fire let me know what you guys come up with that would be really cool join the discord i want to hear it my name is Ella, creative sound creative university that was just my little demo of how you can use samples inside your doll Remember music is art, you the artist. Paint your pictures, stay creative without rules. <laughs>